Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how to set your lenses nodal point for good panoramics. So what is a nodal point and why do you need to use it? So the nodal point is that point where the light coming into the lens converges and then begins to diverge to get to the sensor or film. If everything were perfect, the nodal point would be the very center of every lens. But with like modern 35 millimeter lens designs, uh, it, it's not. It could be anywhere in there. Uh, but it is that point where the light crosses over to then diverge again. Why do you set it? The nodal point, when you rotate a camera for panoramics uh, using multiple frames, you have foreground objects and background objects that when you pan the camera side to side, those foreground and background objects are going to move laterally at different rates. So you might have a foreground object that's lined up with the background, and then when you turn the camera, they will unalign. That can cause issues if you're trying to stitch, that can cause stitching issues. If you are just trying to create smooth uh, panoramics made of multiple panels of individual images, then you'll get um, differing angles, and you might not want that in your image. Now, there are people who do this, and they don't care. Um, there are artists that they're going to make multiple panel diptychs, triptychs, quadtricks, and it doesn't matter if they're using the nodal point for creatively, that's not the point of their imagery, and that's okay. There's a creative choice, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're trying to do something like a stitched panorama, you need those points to be as smooth as possible. Software can only do so much. It is getting better, but it can still only do so much. Um, or it might just be creatively. You want to create the illusion of a smooth image broken up by the edge of the frame. And you're only going to get that smooth panoramic image from one panel to the next by using the nodal point. So how do you do it? Well, first off, you need to find somewhere where you can set the camera up that has a good foreground object and background object. Um, now, you can set everything up prior and then go out and shoot with everything set to the nodal point, and that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an object all centered, and then we're going to have... Don't shoot me at a breaking camera. <laughs> Don't worry. It's insured. So the first thing we're going to do is show the difference between what happens when you don't have that point set. So right now the camera on the tripod as normal, I have my rotation point under the film or sensor. And, and we're going to set up a foreground object, which I would love to have one in the scene that's close enough, but we don't. So we're going to use the tripod that the video camera is on, and we're going to move the video camera here and show what happens when we pan simply with that. So what we have is our tripod here, lined up with this po pole right here. And if I turn the camera, we can start to see now the tripod head is lined up with the door frame and not the post. If we go the other way, again, this shifted, now it's to the side of this pole. Only when it's centered are they lined up together. And that's what happens when we have the rotation point under the film or sensor. So now we're going to shift the camera back so that the rotation point is moved forward in relation to the camera lens. And we'll see what kind of effects we get there. Now I'm going to rotate the camera so that my tripod and the pole are on the edge of the frame. And I'm going to shift the camera back on its mount. All right, 
So now they're aligned and we're going to rotate the camera again to the center. Now that we have it aligned in the center and on the sides, as we pan the camera, those two points will stay converged and they'll stay in a straight line. And as we shift the camera or rotate it around, our images will stay smooth. So an example of that is here. Now, what I'm using for this right here is just a inexpensive or relatively inexpensive macro rail off of Amazon. It's just a screwdrive um, and it's just attached to the tripod. Uh, this is a leveling base that came with a Manfrotto thing. I'll show you in a moment. But this just screwdrive, you turn it and it shifts the camera front and back. But the rotation point is still the column of the tripod. So I can just rotate it here if I rotate it at the tripod head, well, my point of rotation is still under the film, and it doesn't do any good. It's got to be under that nodal point of the lens. And it can work either horizontally or vertically. Horizontally, your tripod is always going to be mounted directly under the center of the, uh, the film or sensor. If you have one of these brackets where it's vertical, it may not be. So now, my sensor may be here, but it could be shifted down. And so my rotation point may not be under the nodal point of the lens. It could be slightly to the side. In that case, we have other options than something like this. Instead, we're using something like this. So this is a Manfrotto uh, panoramic head. And it actually comes with an attachment so I can do 360 spherical, which is doing this vertically as well, but we're only worried right now about the horizontal. And what this allows me to do is not only shift the camera back so the rotation point's still here, but also shift the camera side to side so that I can get that center point over the tripod. And since I moved it, I now need to get it lined up again. It doesn't have to be super precise on the side to side, but it has to be pretty close. And then front to back, I'll need to do a um, quick alignment, and then we'll take some sample photos of this. All right, so we have that in place. Now I can go ahead and just take the photographs. and how much overlap you have is up to you by looking at what's in the frame, what's on the edge of the frame, and going from there. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change from this camera uh, and shoot digital, and we're going to try this with um, Instax wide film on the 4x5 because a head like this is strong enough to hold something like a 4x5. And that'll give us like a Hockney esque Polaroid um, combination image, which David Hockney didn't really use anything like this. He just held the camera and sprayed in different directions. And you can see that the overlap, the, the spacing is nothing like. Uh, reality, but you could do something like that with a head like this and actually space them out um, more realistically. So let's remove the digital camera and let's get the 4x5. All right, so we got the camera in the vertical orientation, got everything leveled. So let's open this up. I have the 150 millimeter lens on here. So the first thing we need to do. Just get our focus. There we go. Now 
All right, and let's frame our first shot. Okay, so first off, we're gonna to need to go ahead and get everything into alignment. So let's do that real fast. And we're gonna do that again by just sliding this front to back and get that nodal point set. Okay, so we are all set now. Um, let's go ahead and get our first shot. And I need to lock in first. There we go. And I can turn this freely. Okay, so let's meter. Also get our cable release put in. And since we're using that film, that is an ISO of 400 or 800. And five hundredth of a second at F22. So let's do that. F22. Five hundred. Okay. All right, we'll warm that up. And while that one is processing, we'll go ahead and get our second shot lined up. Okay, so if I want this spaced, and I've got that line on the purple, just before this building thing here, we're going to rotate it and get that just on the frame. There we go. going to do the same exposure. Ugh, a lot of back and forth here. So good thing we've got consistent lighting. That warming up. Let's do one more. There we go.
All right. And now we can see with those put, put together what our final image looks like. All right, and then putting those images together, we can see our triptych panorama. And that is how you would use the nodal point in order to get those smooth images. Now, as I said before, creatively, that may not be what you're always looking for. But it can be used with great success, just takes a little bit of setup. It's very quick with something like this that slides back and forth. Very quick to set up, very easy to use. You can get something expensive like this. I bought mine off eBay for only a hundred dollars or so years and years ago. But you can get things like this. Um, sturdy, holds heavy cameras, lets you use film, digital, any of those things. So it's a nice piece of equipment. Uh, and then the effects of getting that nodal point set up over your rotation gives those nice smooth panoramas, which personally I like, but haven't always used. As you can see from these examples of a series I did many, many years ago, photographing the ground glass of this camera, and then the image on, on either side to give a sense of context for the image, because that's what I was thinking about in that series, not just the photograph, but what is the context that photograph is made in? And I didn't care about getting the nodal point in that case. But as I moved on, it felt like it was something I wanted to try. I got one of these devices and have used it to make spherical panoramics for uh, digital spaces. Um, I've used it to make some just creative images of these tiled multi-image panels. Uh, diptychs, triptychs, and so on. So it's a nice little effect, and it might help you uh, in that creative endeavor, and I highly suggest you try something like that out. So thanks for watching. Hopefully it was useful for you. We'll see you next time.